tonight, the great debate. It's time for Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States, and I to debate. Trump challenges Biden to a rematch on stage. Because the question is, the question is, the question left. Will you shut up, man? Can Trump create the moments of past that changed elections? I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. Where were you? We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. A double murder turned America's biggest celebrity athlete into one of the country's most hated villains. It is an amazing sight. Uh, Along the right-hand shoulder, people have pulled over. Why the country never healed. Have you ever falsified a police report? I wish to assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. O.J.'s lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, tells all now that O.J.'s dead. Fair shot. All these crooked cases are brought about by the Justice Department in one form or another. Trump's plan to get a fair jury in New York City. His criminal trial starts Monday. The O.J. jury consultant tells Trump who to pick. Nobody caught it. How this photo may show how unprepared for war America really is. Welcome to the Ferris Show on television. First tonight, will Joe Biden debate from now until the election or until he debates? That's exactly what Donald Trump wants you talking about. It's only April and already Trump's team wants answers on the format and the moderators that would participate In any debate with President Biden this fall, his campaign put out a big push today, including this video on social media. It's time for Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States, and I to debate. We owe it to our country. We owe it to all Americans. Anytime, anywhere, anyplace. Pretty simple. Mano y mano. Last month, President Biden wouldn't commit to debating Trump. And conventional wisdom says Biden clearly has the most to lose. Then again, the 2020 debates did not work out well for Trump. To let people know, you're a senator. I'm not going to answer the question. Why would you answer that question? Because the question is, the question is, the question left. Will you shut up, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This is so right. Gentlemen, I think this is so unprecedented. Trump bombed in the first debate. He was a jerk, and his poll numbers crashed. But this time around, Trump views nothing more helpful to him than the side-by-side of him and Joe Biden, for obvious reasons. Biden refusing to debate will become a proxy for his age and senior moments. Almost 40 years ago, people said the exact same thing about another sitting president, a very old sitting president at the time, and then Ronald Reagan showed up. I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. (laughs) George Will remembers that moment, is with us now, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for The Washington Post, also a News Nation senior political contributor. Mr. Will, good to see you. Um, as always, something has happened for Joe Biden over the past month or so. I think this is one of the reasons that Trump is getting a little more um, talkative about the debate issue. December 12th, uh, Trump's largest lead recently in the average, Trump 45, Biden 42. Uh, current average tied most recent polls, Joe Biden ahead. These polls are moving in the same direction, which helps Mr. Biden. They are, however, almost all within the margin of error. So much can change. You know the old axiom that overnight's a long time in American politics and a week is forever. And all these numbers, 41 percent here, 37 percent there, are less important than a number that came out yesterday, 3.5 percent. The fact that inflation is persisting, it's not transitory, and that means that the prospect of a federal rate cut in the interest rates is uh, disappearing. Look. Debates always tend to have sections. There's some on the, one on the economy. There's one on national security. There's three or four parts of the debate. Each one has different topics. Um, this is with the networks that just sent out a letter about the debates. If there's one thing Americans can agree on, there's simply no substitute for the candidates debating with each other. 
And before the American people, News Nation, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, NBC, AP, C-SPAN, on and on and on. Um, will the media shame Joe Biden into debating? It's going to be a test of the mainstream media's, how should we put this, even-handedness at this point. Does it even require to be even-handed? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Mr. Trump is making this plea, making it now systematically and with the video you just showed, is not Another indication that the 2024 Trump campaign is much more disciplined, much more intelligently managed, much more farsighted and long-headed than it was four years ago. You made the point, right, that the inflation, the economy, it's the economy stupid. Those are all – those are what turns elections. What turns debates, though, are, are moments. We played one with Reagan – um, and I think it's worth playing one when he was a challenger, which, for that matter, Donald Trump is going to be. This is Donald, Ronald Reagan, 1980. Governor Reagan, as a matter of fact, began his political career campaigning around this nation against Medicare. There you go again. <laughs> it was unmatched between Reagan and Carter. We can all agree on that. You think it's unmatched between Biden and Trump, but I'm wondering if it's not necessarily conventional wisdom being incorrect. It, I think what depends is when we have the debates, and I think we will have them, although we, we didn't have any from the founding to 1960. And then we had TV. We screwed everything up. But now, now it is an accepted civic duty to debate. So it's going to depend which Trump shows up. That is, if they can control him, if they can sedate him, give him some Valium, something to simmer him down so that he doesn't become, as you rightly said a moment ago, a jerk as he was the last time, it will, he'll be in, in good shape. Well, but, you know, the, the jerk thing wasn't in the script. I ad-libbed it because I was responding to remembering that, that back and forth. And there was a moment, though, and I think, you know, you... You can criticize Trump's style, and, and he, clearly in the 2020 debates he went overboard. But there was a moment with Hillary Clinton that I think crystallized what a lot of people were thinking in 2016, um, and it was effective. Take a listen. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton... <laughs> He won. He has a comedian's instinct for a one-liner. He has a kind of feral relationship with his audience. He's, he's like a Borscht Belt Catskills comedian in upstate New York. And uh, it's a real talent. Has nothing whatsoever, nothing whatsoever with, with to be demonstrating the governor, governing attributes. But there it is. So to that point, though, and you, you have the issue of, of Joe Biden's, we'll call them senior moments, um, of which Trump has some gas, but not nearly to the extent that Joe Biden does. Um, would, would that not be sort of an, the ultimately most dangerous test for the White House to put him out there? The flip side of that is they sort of do what they do with the State of the Union, which is they set the expectations so low. And is that what's happening from now until September? It's one thing to set the expectations low when you're reading a teleprompter. It is another thing to set the expectations when you're in the cage with a cage fighter, a World Wrestling Federation type, which Mr. Trump jubilantly, happily is. How much of whether they debate or not depends on whether the media is, to your point, even-handed? And I guess the dot, dot, dot is... It's in the media's best interest for them to debate because it gives us something to talk about and nights to do and makes reporters happy uh, and gives us things to talk about on TV. Does the media pick Joe Biden or themselves? The media is going to be hard put to explain to the American public that it would be a bad idea to have this information generating episode called a debate. All right. Mr. Will? Thank you very much. We appreciate it. A lot of us remember where we were for various presidential debates. I know you do. Almost all of us, perhaps every one of us, remembers where we were the day O.J. Simpson was found not guilty. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. 
or the day he led police on a chase across Los Angeles in his white Ford Bronco. When he stood trial and was later acquitted in the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, it was the first time that a cable news story, something we all watched together, divided America. Also might have been the first time white Americans realized how black Americans really felt about the criminal justice system. 28 years since the verdict, many of those same issues still exist. It is impossible to overstate the significance of the Simpson trial. Alan Dershowitz was one of OJ's lawyer, joins us now, author of the book Get Trump, The Threat to Civil Liberties, Due Process, and Our Constitutional Real Law. Uh, Counselor, good to see you. Uh, Mr. Simpson passed away today. Um, In his death, is there anything that you can share differently about your feelings on the case uh, than when he was alive? No, uh, lawyer-client privilege applies to the death of the client and the death of the lawyer. So I can never disclose my own belief or feelings about his innocence or guilt. What I can disclose is that whether he was guilty or innocent, he was framed. Uh, The police tampered with evidence, created a piece of evidence um, by taking a sock they had found in front of O.J.'s bed and pouring blood on it from a test tube that Officer Van Adder had improperly taken home. The test tube had the blood both of O.J. Simpson and another one had the blood of one of the victims. We were able to prove that the blood that was on the sock contained the chemical um, that was uh, not found in the human body. It's a blood thinner that's uh, used uh, in test tubes in order to prevent Mm. the coagulation of blood. And also from the blood splatter evidence, we were able to prove that the sock had been laying flat when blood had been poured on it. That led the jury to conclude that at least one piece of evidence had been made up by the prosecution, not by the prosecutors themselves, but by the police, and it uh, caused them to have reasonable doubt about the other evidence in the case. And that explains, essentially, an acquittal of somebody who most Americans think may very well have done it. 57% of America watched the verdict, right? 107 million people. That's up there with the moon landing. When you were in that courtroom that day, did you realize the cultural significance of what was happening? Well, I realized the cultural significance right from the beginning um, because people would come up to me and either hug me if they were black or in one case spit at me or yell at me and scream at me if they were white. Uh, This was a case that divided America along racial lines. And uh, the jury selection, therefore, was very important. The prosecution made the mistake of wanting the jury uh, case to be tried uh, downtown. And uh, a jury was selected, which was predominantly uh, black women. Um, We were satisfied with that jury because we thought they would have a better understanding of police corruption and police misconduct and the ability of the police and willingness to plant evidence against somebody who they thought was guilty. So race played a big role. Uh, It reflected the divisions in the country. Yeah. Yeah, huge role. Uh, We actually have part of your argument in court to the jury. Take a listen. The basis is very clear. If your honor didn't see, everybody else in the country saw Marsha Clark walking out after one of the jurors was disqualified, giving another prosecutor a thumbs up sign. We have an affidavit here that Mr. Darden told Mr. Cochran, we got your boy. Bring back memories? It brings back memories. I had a mustache and I was younger and smarter and better looking, but um, it's uh, still pretty quick. The memories are mixed, obviously. It was a difficult time. People cursed at me. People refused to talk to me. Nowhere close to what happened when I defended President Donald Trump in his Senate impeachment. There, I lost close friends. People just disassociated them from me uh, and because he's running for president again, obviously, and they uh, think he's a great danger to the country. So, But we live in an age where everybody is taking sides on every issue, and the O.J. Simpson case reflected that 30 years ago. Yeah, we said uh, in the beginning uh, of the segment that it was the first time cable news really divided America. And you point out rightly, America has divided since then, right? So many things came out of the OJ case, um, the idea of, of court, you know, court TV uh, and trials being broadcasted, and the Kardashians, of all things, came out of the OJ Simpson case. I was interested today um, when the White House talked about the case that Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman's name were not, were not mentioned. 
And I'm wondering how you feel that OJ, in the end, came back to sort of be this weird part of American culture. I mean, he wasn't a pitch man for Hertz anymore, but the, his arc continued uh, and theirs did not. Look, I agree with you. I thought a lot today about Ron Goldman and about Nicole Brown. I thought about them both. Uh, if they had called me first, if their family had called me first, if Ron Goldman's father had called me first, I would have been happy and honored to represent him. That's what lawyers, doctors, priests, ministers, psychologists, that's what we do. We represent people who are dis- disliked. Sometimes we don't like them. We don't want to represent them, but we do. And I think we ought to honor the memories, not only of uh, O.J. Simpson, who died today, but also of the two people who he was accused of of killing. People can differ as to whether he was guilty or not, but nobody can differ about the fact that they were brutally murdered and their memories deserve to be honored. Yeah. You you mentioned how divided America now is, and I think you make a great point. Um, the parallels, um, and maybe even in a magnified way, of how the country was divided um, about the about OJ and about his guilt, um, and now how divided America has become on every issue, and even and even in a magnified and amplified way. Do you right. do you see though? Did you, at the time when you saw when he was acquitted? Did you did you see that division continuing, or was it hey maybe this acquittal? will bring America, can, can bring America together and can be the moment that in some way good things came out of a verdict like that, a wake-up call that maybe never got answered. No. No, it never happened that way. As soon as the acquittal was yeah. rendered, the defense got even worse. People came over to me and said, all right, I understand you're defending him. You have a right, you know, he has a right to a defense, but why'd you have to win? Uh, there was real fury at us winning the case, real fury at the defense team, Real fury at O.J. Simpson. I advised O.J. Simpson at that point, please just go quiet and and low profile. But he didn't take my advice, and he went on Larry King that night. He went on many other TV shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he and he wrote the book. If I did it and everything else, I know you advised against that. I just want to play, and I there's these sort of cultural touchstones, right? I remember where I was um, during the during the Bronco chase, whatever you want to call it, um, covered across the country. Here's the clip can only assume that he plans to get off at sunset and go towards perhaps his home. It is an amazing sight uh, along the right-hand shoulder. People have pulled over, many of them carrying signs such as signs reading things like save the juice, go OJ. All right, almost 28 years to the day. Um, is it? Is we take you back to that day Are you glad you got involved with the O.J. case, or do you wish when he had called you, you said, no thanks? No, I'm glad I got involved. I helped to expose uh, police corruption in Los Angeles. I helped to close the tensions. Uh, I helped to educate Americans about what proof beyond a reasonable doubt means, and so in balance. Uh, It was an important case, and I'm glad to have been part of it, as I have been glad to be part of so many important cases in the 60 years that I've been practicing law. I'm 85 now. I hope the good Lord gives me a couple more years to defend a few more unpopular people and make more enemies. That's the job of the criminal defense lawyer. That's what John Adams did. That's what Abraham Lincoln did. That's what Clarence Darrow did. I don't include myself in their company, but I try hard to follow in their footsteps. I would add Patrick Henry to that list as well, sir. Um, yep. it's, it is a privilege to talk to you. Um, you're the right, the right man to speak about um, this in your your nuance on it, on it, and the emotion is important. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you. Much people, uh, All right. The jury, of course, acquitted OJ. Can anyone get a New York jury to acquit Donald Trump in 2024? Why Trump's lawyers want firefighters, cops, and sanitation workers. Special primetime coverage. It's one of the most infamous murder trials ever. And Geraldo Rivera was there for it all. Now he's guest hosting Cuomo, remembering the murder, the chase, and the trial of O.J. Simpson. And on Dan Abrams Live, hear O.J. in his own words talk about the murders. Then, Cato Kalin, O.J.'s former house guest, is only talking to Ashley live. Special coverage starts tonight, 8, 7 central, only on News Nation. 
All right, the jury, of course, the jury, of course, acquitted OJ. On Monday, Donald Trump's first criminal trial begins, a jury trial. It's hard to imagine a crazier sentence to say no so nonchalantly than the former president going on trial. Criminal trials come down to math. Prosecution need 12 jurors to convict. Trump only needs one to see it his way, and he gets to walk out the courthouse steps and declare victory. 500 prospective jurors got questionnaires that include things like, do you listen to or watch podcasts? If so, which ones? Do you listen to talk radio? If so, which programs? Have you ever considered yourself a supporter or belong to QAnon movement, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, Three Percenters, Boogaloo Boys, all conservative groups, or Antifa? Lawyers and jury consultants then pour over the responses. Joel and Demetrius joins us. Jury consultants worked on many high-profile high cases with acquittals. She worked on the O.J. Simpson trial and was also there for the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Rittenhouse was acquitted of homicide for shooting two men and wounding another, killing two men during a riot. He was acquitted on grounds of self-defense. Joanne, thank you. We appreciate this. Um, look, Kyle Rittenhouse, I get. Like, people knew about it, but nobody has firm ideas. Then you've got OJ that everybody knew about and knew the, the case. But how do you find 12 people who, especially in New York City, don't have an opinion of Donald Trump? Uh, sadly, you're not going to find that unless it's somebody who's crawled out from under a rock and hasn't been part of uh, what's going on in New York for uh, for literally months. Uh, and that's, you know, that's the most difficult task. Um, it's going to be evaluating those people who, with whatever they've seen, read, or heard, can they still be fair and impartial? Um, and I have to say... Uh, based on the questionnaire that Judge Marchand um, is going to administer to these folks, there's seven pages worth of questions, uh, 42 questions specifically. What's really unique about the way that the judge is going to be uh, dealing with this case is normally a written juror questionnaire is just that. It's actually filled out by the jurors in the courthouse before they begin the voir dire process. What's tremendously unusual about this case is the judge is simply going to ask the questions in open court of each one of these jurors. So, number one, it's going to take a very long time to go through however many jurors may be left after 500 folks say, you know, I can't no serve, kidding. I have a hardship. Yeah. Uh, and, and secondly, what is unusual and I think very uh, uh, unfortunate for the defense is that these jurors will be answering these questions in open court. You talk about an intimidation factor. It's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. And again, I think that that is a disservice to the defense that the judge is doing it this way because the juror questionnaire is actually designed so that people can respond in private as they're filling it out. It's not to be something that's disseminated to the entire world, which unfortunately will happen here. Yeah, and then obviously uh, if it's an open court, then people can write about it and the press can write about it and on and on. Uh, Donald Trump has made a big issue about how to find a fair jury um, in New York. Take a listen. Another judge rejected Trump's request to prevent the case from going to trial while Trump tries to move the case out of New York. That was just two hours after his attorneys argued that Manhattanites could never make up a fair jury for Trump. In 2020, um, New York City voted by 76 percent to 23 percent for Joe Biden. So obviously getting a fair jury panel uh, is, all, is impossible. Can a judge assemble a fair jury in Manhattan to hear this case? People who will listen to the evidence, and follow the instructions of the court. Absolutely. All right, so this is the profile that's been put together, I guess, uh, of, of who would be favorable to each side. Trump, younger black men, police officers, firefighters, sanitation workers, makes sense. Prosecutors, college-educated voters, people with Democratic neighborhoods, which is all of New York. MSNBC watchers, fans of late-night comedians Colbert, Kimmel, um, and the like. Is it that simple, though? I mean, take me through as it Trump's going to have jury consultants. They're not just going to be listening to the answers. They're going to be watching the jurors. What are they watching for? 
Well, the uh, consultants are both side are going to be listening to uh, how the jurors respond to the judge. If either attorney, the prosecution or the defense attorneys ask follow up questions, they're going to be listening to how the juror responds to that individual. You're also going to be looking at body language. Um, you're going to be looking at, is this a juror who is facing whomever is questioning them directly, or are they turning away or looking down as if they're not interested? So that's a, a, a small fraction of what's going to happen in this case. And I think it's also, Leland, very important for your audience to know that the other part of this is now in any high-profile case, social media searches are done on each and every juror. And so what essentially the consultants are going to be doing kind of on both sides is almost like these, these jurors are being given a, uh, a polygraph test. The polygraph being that they're answering the questions to the juror questionnaire out loud, and uh, they will then evaluate on social media, have they said something different? Have they posted something different to what they actually say in court? And the unfortunate part of what's happened is that the judge released this juror questionnaire this past Wednesday before the actual panel comes in. That gives everybody who's a potential juror, and it's not too difficult to figure out, hey, I've been summoned for jury duty in criminal court starting on Monday, that you're going to be there for President Trump's case. So these people, these uh, prospective jurors, have that opportunity to look at the questionnaire online and to decide how they want to answer it. Are they going to answer truthfully or are they not? It, do they want to convict President Trump? Or do they want to acquit him? So really, both sides uh, are going to be evaluating that information as well as what they hear in the courtroom. It's a very, very unusual uh, scenario yeah. for a jury selection. It's, the, the things you've laid out in the permutations are fascinating. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to put our oar in that we'd like to rebook you um, for next week um, as this process is going through. We're not going to have tape of, of this process, but we'll certainly have readouts from it. I'd love to get your um, perspective on it. And some of the things you brought up, I'm sure, uh, are going to be issues uh, for appeal uh, if the president um, is convicted. Joel, thank you. We appreciate the time. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Yes, ma'am. Just take a look at this photo. Stop what you're doing for one second and just look at this photo. Nobody in the Navy, nobody in the Defense Department noticed that a high-ranking naval officer is holding a rifle with the scope mounted backwards. Is this indicative of the U.S. Navy after they put it on their Instagram page? We'll see you in a minute. You know the 80s. Oh, yeah. Neon colored everything. Shoulder pads like a linebacker. Plutonium powering your DeLorean. The stuff works. Moonwalk <laughs> through the 80s and 90s on Rewind TV. It's a totally outstanding television network that's free over the air or on cable. This is a big deal. Your favorite sitcoms from the 80s and 90s are all in one place. Rewind TV. Just go to rewindtv.com and check it out. At the Home Depot, we're ready to help get your spaces in spring shape outside and inside. Give your walls and ceilings a spring refresh with Bare Premium Plus paint and primer, starting at $28.98 a gallon, and bring a new color inside. And you can upgrade your spring cleaning with heavy-duty HTX storage totes to keep your garage, closets, and attic organized. Get ready for spring outside with a refresh inside at the Home Depot. How doers get more done eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This is The Making of America from the Jefferson Media Group. Born in 1880, 
Helen Keller would only know the worlds of sight and sound for 18 months before a crippling disease would leave her blind, deaf, and speechless. Her father hired a specialist to tutor, and that decision would change the world for the better. Helen Keller began and ended every day reading the Bible. She graduated cum laude from Radcliffe College, making her the first deaf and blind person to ever earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. She established Helen Keller International to support veterans blinded in combat, helped found the American Civil Liberties Union, and served as an ambassador and advocate for the American Federation of the Blind until her death in 1968. This has been The Making of America. I'm Michael Emerson, and you can visit us at jeffersonmediagroup.com. Are you growing mentally older, not stimulating your mind? Dr. Gary Probst here with a thought about keeping your mind young in just a moment. David was in big trouble with the IRS. At first, I didn't owe that much, but after this year, it was out of control. Then David called Get a Tax Lawyer. Right away, they were like, oh yeah, looks like you're qualified to save Get a Tax Lawyer went to work. (laughs) Should have called way sooner. Get a Tax Lawyer has helped thousands like David fight the IRS and get a fresh start. Call 800-783-0798. That's 800-783-0798. Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. The greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young. That quote is from Henry Ford. There's proof that learning right into your 80s will help fight dementia. As you learn, your brain builds new neural connections. Your brain is like a computer. Would you continue with the same old software for a lifetime? Would you not seek new information to store in your brain's hard drive? That's called the hippocampus. As we age, our working memory diminishes, but there's no limit to what you can store. So it takes a prompt or a second or two to remember something, but you'll have the answer. Keep learning. Take online courses, read, do puzzles. So here is today's lesson. Keep on learning, to stay active, and to keep your mind mentally young. You're listening to On Balance with Leland Vitter on News Nation, America's fastest growing cable news network. Hey, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and this is my co star, Arthur. <laughs> My new movie is based on the true story of a dog who treks hundreds of miles to find someone to love him. Arthur's not alone. Best Friends Animal Society is working to make sure dogs and cats in shelters across the country find a loving home of their very own. When you adopt from a shelter or a rescue group, you are helping to save the lives of pets like Arthur and so many others. Visit bestfriends.org today and find an adoptable pet near you. That's what's up. Good job. I am not a firearm person. Just not a gun guy. I never grew up with them. But even I know, when you look through the scope of a rifle, you should see something, anything. A lesson apparently lost on the captain of a Navy warship forward deployed with the 7th Fleet. This is Commander Cameron Yaste reportedly watching a training drill. Uh, as the Internet was quick to point out, uh, based on the Instagram photo that the U.S. Navy posted, the scope on the rifle is backwards, And it's hard to tell, but perhaps even has the lens cap on. The post was up on the Navy's Instagram with the caption, from engaging in practice gun shoots, conducting maintenance, testing fuel purity, and practicing in sea and anchor details, the hashtag U.S. Navy is always ready to serve and protect. Commander Yaste, by the way, is a previous combat systems and weapons officer. He was also a weapons and executive officer. He attended the Naval Postgraduate School and got a master's degree in astronautics. For those of you who don't know, we looked it up. Astronautics is the study of spaceships. Retired Navy SEAL Clint Emerson is here. Um, Is it fair to ridicule the commander who's the captain of this ship? I mean, in the SEAL teams, yes, it's completely fair. Uh, We have a saying, you know, the root word to officer is office, and that's where they should probably hang out. The commanding officer is good at uh, writing awards, writing evals, leading, managing money. Uh, These are the things they're good at. Let's hope that he is really good at shooting guided missiles, since that's what he is the CO of. (laughs) Yeah, no, look, it's a a good point. I guess, you know, you think about this just from a process standpoint. I get that you're not an expert in process of, of how things get on social media, but Somebody, you know, if somebody had to hand him a weapon here, sir, he, he puts on his ear protection, he, he raises the weapon, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe he notices that 
things look really far away because the scope's backwards. Maybe he doesn't. But then somebody has to take a picture. The picture's got to get sent up to Big Navy. Then somebody's got to approve the picture. They've got to edit the picture. Then they, somebody puts it on social media. How is it possible that nobody noticed this? That's a great question. I mean, I feel like uh, there's a lot of uh, discipline and awareness missing in the system, obviously, because if you don't see that as the CO as soon as you're handed that rifle, uh, that's that's a huge issue. Um, you know, most of the time in the military, we're graded on two big things, that's safety and performance, and he failed at both. Because if you don't know that that rifle is really screwy, then you shouldn't be shooting it. And if you zoom in, he's on full auto, and that's why he's got a range safety officer holding his arm back there so that he doesn't spray everybody on the uh, flight deck. But, yeah, I don't know how it was missed. I really don't. Well, at, at the same time, if you're a commanding officer, your responsibility is to at least know how things on on your ship operate. Um, is it fair to extrapolate, and I say this because I, I never served, and I – I uh, certainly have a lot of respect for anybody who's willing to put on the uniform, whether it be as an officer on a ship or in the SEAL teams or anywhere else. Um, but is it fair to say about an officer that if, if you can't figure out how to make sure that when someone hands you a weapon that the scope's put on correctly and if someone hands it to you and then someone takes a picture of it and you're firing it, maybe at that point you, you go back and you check and you figure out how to make sure is that a uh, picture doesn't get out? Is that is that part? Is that fair to hold him responsible for that? I would say so. I mean, you are managing a multi-billion-dollar uh, vessel, right? That has guided missiles on it, and if you can't look at that weapon and know that something is wrong, then they probably should take a, a closer look at him and his career because. You know, as soon as he put the optic up to his eye, he should have known something was wrong. As soon as he held right, that, so forward, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand at all how something like this would happen, unless there's a motivated sailor that decided to put it in his hand for the photo yeah. shoot and the joke. Well, spoken like a man who may have pulled a few pranks in his days, but don't worry, we, we're <laughs> out of time. We will not hold you responsible for them on television. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, let them eat cake. Jeff Bezos and his fiance paraded through President Biden's White House. Bezos, Bezos did not say much to reporters, but his body language speaks volumes. What he was saying about President Biden when we come back. Need to reach adulthood. That's why vaccines matter so much. For 40 years, Rotary and partners have delivered vaccines globally. Like here and even here. In your neighborhood and around the world, Rotary is ensuring children grow up safe from preventable diseases. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. VA provides free or low-cost health care to eligible veterans and covers everything from preventative to specialty care. No one knows veterans better. Sign up at VA.gov, call 1-800-MY-VA-411 or visit your nearest VA medical center. Come see why 90% of patients say they trust VA for their health care. Thanks for listening to News Nation on the go. I'm Marnie Hughes, delivering fact based, unbiased news from all sides. At YMCA Summer Camp, kids find their why friendship and fun, a world of adventure beneath a golden sun. Running, laughing, full of wonder. Being themselves is second nature. Summer camp is where they begin to unlock the confidence that lies within. When kids find new passions, they find their why. Summer camp season starts soon. Learn more at ymca.org for a better us. Over the last few years, things have got weird. And for our kids, these things can be overwhelmingly stressful. Scientific research and real life experience tell us that the number one antidote to stress is authentic, trusted relationships. So that's why I, that's why I, that's why I am committed to building and maintaining a trusted space. This is a trusted space. Access free films and resources to build trusted spaces in your schools and communities at atrustedspace.org. Substance use disorder and addiction is so isolating. And so as a black woman in recovery, Hope must be loud. 
It grows louder when you ask for help and you're vulnerable. It is the thread that lets you know that no matter what happens, you will be okay. When we learn the power of hope, recovery is possible. Find out how at startwithhope.com. Brought to you by the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, Shatterproof, and the Ad Council. Every child deserves the best teachers, facilities, and academic programs to set them up for success. At Milton Hershey School in Hershey, Pennsylvania, we make that a reality for children from qualifying families who are looking for greater opportunities. Milton Hershey School enrolls students from pre-K through 12th grade from across the United States to live and learn on a beautiful state-of-the-art campus with all costs covered. Are you looking to set your child up for success or know a child who could benefit from Milton Hershey School? Learn more at mhskids.org slash admissions. taxpayers dime. They didn't say much to reporters on the way in. Nobody really wanted to talk. Some did, but what they said with their body spoke languages. Body language expert, former U.S. Army interrogator Greg Hartley is with us now. Good to see you. Um, I know a lot of people were focused on Lauren Sanchez. That is Jeff Bezos' wife. We'll focus on Jeff Bezos um, who was asked about supporting Joe Biden. Take a listen. crazy she looked a lot more comfortable than he did yeah he's awkward that gate does look awkward i think he's intent on getting past whatever the barrage of questions he might be going to or because you can see he's wooden his arms aren't swinging back and forth normally hers are she's moving normally and more fluidly i typically talk about energy direction and focus with people his energy is high his focus is kind of scattered and his in his direction is internal so it looks a little bit like he wants to get through there and he's concerned about it now, look, and uh, who, who wouldn't if the White House press corps is asking you uh, questions, especially if you're Jeff Bezos? Um, she seemed to be enjoying herself uh, thoroughly. It was a little bit uh, of the opposite with Bill and Hillary Clinton, um, who walked in as guests of the Bidens. Take a listen. He could have stayed there all night, couldn't he have? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's his superpower. I always say if Clinton had a superpower, it would be connecting with people. He's like a little kid. You know, little kids flirt across from seat to seat in a plane and make and then close space. He is masterful at it. People that don't like his policy still like him. They think he's the most charismatic person they've met for that reason. What do you make of Hillary? Oh, she's typical of, of Hillary. I think she is not comfortable in those kinds of spaces, and she's learned to be. There are great photos of them when they're very young and in college, and you can see he's a, he is paying close attention to the camera, and she's paying close attention to the photographer. I think she's keenly aware of the situation more than she's keenly aware of the audience or people. What do you make of sort of how he his voice and as he was talking, it almost it was almost wistful, right? That he was he was back in his element. They said, "Welcome back to him," and you thought almost. Bill Clinton was thinking to myself, yeah, this was this was fun. <laughs> yeah, I think he is that guy. I think anytime he gets the opportunity to interact with people, if you go watch him, we did a lot of shows on him on my channel, and we talk about him with UFOs and anything else he talks about. He's always that guy. He's always engaging. He always has the ability to, to make a contact with the people he's talking to. All right, we're going to skip ahead. Uh, we're going to pass up Robert De-, De Niro and Tiffany Chen and get to uh, President Biden, who was obviously hosting last night. Take a listen. Thoughts? Yeah, you know, that's a a regular thing. I I was in that unit for two years. That's a ceremonial unit across the river from you guys there in Arlington. And that is a normal thing for people to do. You would think this president would know how to do it. I think he's a little confused there and what to do if you pay attention to him. This guy in the middle is a current, I think it's Colonel Roland, who is in charge of the 3rd Infantry now. And he's trying to even keep in step with these guys instead of the other way. So interesting. He looks a little confused. You would think he knows exactly how to do this after all these years of being in government. 
All right, Greg, um, whenever we have you on, I'm always self-conscious as I'm saying goodbye about what <laughs> what I am exuding uh, in my energy and how, how you would judge me. We'll do that sometime. You, we'll, we'll have you judge one of our segments. It'll be fun. We'll talk to you soon. Love to. Thanks. All right. A movie called Civil War opens in theaters tomorrow. Why Hollywood seems so interested in highlighting the worst parts of America. That scene is from a movie coming out tomorrow. It's called Civil War. It's a film about California and Texas seceding from America. Forget the irony of Hollywood putting Texas and California on the same team. The film's images are very reminiscent of the January 6th and 2020 BLM riots. It comes while the border is one of the most important topics to Americans. Bacha Unger Sargon's here, opinion editor of Newsweek. She traveled the country to ask working class Americans about our divided country for her new book. Best book out, I'd say this year, Bacha. Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women. I read it uh, over last weekend. It was fantastic. Um, Is sort of some of the themes in this movie something along the lines of what you were picking up on? This movie is pure leftist propaganda, but it is worse than that. It is the wet dream of the leftist elites who are the people who are purveying the polarization, Okay, so most of Americans are totally, totally united. Polarization is a completely elite phenomenon. You talk to working class people who are Democrats, who are Republicans, they would never in a million years hate somebody because of their political views. But you know who does, Leland? The media, the journalists, Hollywood, all of the elites, the universities, they purvey this view that if you don't agree with them, you are sick and evil and a murderer and a racist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and a threat to democracy. That is their fantasy because it distracts from the fact that they are the ones pushing the divisiveness. They are the ones dividing the country. They are the ones who dream of a civil war because it would justify their sneering at the other side. It's interesting. I, I think you're, you're picking up on something, right? The traditional value of Americans just want to be left alone. Whether they're Republicans or Democrats, they want to be just left alone. That's traditionally American. Progressive values, by definition, want to change the other side. Alex Garland is the guy who's the director. Alex Garland's Civil War is an explosive warning against a Trump takeover. That's how the Daily Beast uh, puts it, I guess. They think, I don't know what they think uh, it's going to happen if Trump takes over. But I digress for a second. I think it's interesting that Hollywood makes this movie because making mo- movies is not cheap. You're supposed to, in Hollywood, want to make money um, from your movies. Um, one of the highest grossing movies in recent times was Top Gun. $1.5 billion, uh, Top Gun 2, which was a story about how great America was. You could love it and appreciate it and root for Tom Cruise and Maverick no matter what your political affiliation was. Um, are Are we to believe that Hollywood sort of loves making a political point more than they do money? Oh, I think that they think this movie is going to portray Trump supporters as violent and anti-democratic. Like the guy in the opening scene who says, what kind of an American are you? Let me tell you something, Leland. You know, conservatives, patriots, they would never ask that because you're an American. That's what matters. The only people who divide Americans are people who don't believe in this country and don't love this country. And we know exactly which side that is. Well, uh, a, a point of personal privilege, I might say. On January 6th, I was asked by one of the rioters what kind of American and what kind of patriot I was. And I was beat up during the 2020 BLM riot. So I don't know where that puts me, um, but that uh, the, the, you, you get it from both sides, I guess, in this world. Um, Bacha, it was good to see you. Thank you. We're going to see how much this movie grosses on the first weekend and compare it um, to Top Gun. It'll be an interesting comparison. Um, and we'll have you back um, to talk about it. Bacha, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's thank good you. to see you. Thanks. All right. You got Geraldo coming up. He is in for Cuomo next. Geraldo understands the OJ trial like none other. We'll take you back to that time in history. And when we all watched the Ford Bronco chase, I don't think anybody really realized how that was going to start a moment in America that we are still living. Alan Dershowitz made that point. That was the beginning of dividing America, and now we are more divided. 